Divorce Lawyers of Reddit. What's the most outrageous reason someone filed for divorce? Paralegal. Here, there's so many crazy divorces and divorce will bring out the absolute worst in couples. When thinking of reasons a divorce started, this one stands out to me the most colon and hashtag x200b. At my last firm we did general law, which included probate. A couple did their will with our firm. We drafted everything. They were mid-70s to early 80s. Married 40 years total. Divorced and remarried once. Husband wanted us to put in his will that his kids get his entire estate, but did not want us to tell his wife. He wanted to have us make a secret will and a fake will. The fake will would be signed with her present. And then he wanted us to shred it and he will come in later to sign the real will. He copied his wife on the email that had all of this information disclosed in it. And hashtag x200b? Two weeks later he called us and said he wanted to file for divorce instead. And hashtag x200b? Bonus one a previous client was pissed his wife was cheating on him. She wanted a non-contested divorce and wanted to use my boss specifically because she knew he was a great lawyer. He pretended to go along with her terms and contacted us literally two days before his wife and retained us. He said he didn't care how much money the retainer was but wanted my boss so his wife couldn't have him as a lawyer. He called and paid first. So he won that battle. My ex and I had agreed to do mediation for our divorce instead of going with lawyers. He went out and met with all the best lawyers in town before choosing the biggest shark around. Then he had me served with papers out of the blue. We live in a relatively small town. I had to scramble to find a decent lawyer, since he had consulted with all the local lawyers. I was unable to retain anyone. I ended up with one that worked in a neighboring town. My mom had to put the retainer down for me because my ex had liquidated all our bank accounts and reported all the credit cards we shared as stolen. I had been a stay-at-home mom for 10 years, so I wasn't making any money at that time. It was a nightmare. Kind of in the same category, I've had a lot of younger male potential clients come in for divorce consults with their mother. Then, during the consult, the mother does 98% of the talking, and it's clear who actually wants the divorce. I'll usually escort mom to wait in the lobby while I talk to the son directly, and most of the time he's just there to appease his mother. And hashtag x200b. On a related note, I once had just the mother call for a consult because she said explicitly she wanted her son to get a divorce. I politely informed her that's not how divorces worked. And hashtag x200b. Edit, because I apparently don't know how to italicize things on Reddit anymore. Paralegal. A couple got divorced over a cat. Wife called cat Snowball because of white fur and only wanted the cat to eat wet food or chicken breast. Husband called cat Lily again because of white fur and believed it should only eat dry food. These two argued for a year over custody of the cat but did not give a shit about their human kids aged 15 months, 4 years, and 6 years old. Not a lawyer but I have I've been aching to tell this story for a while. So this girl I went to school with, marries this rich guy from Ohio. She moves in with him and they seem to get along well. Six months later she files for divorce. Up to that point, all I've heard from her was how good it was going. Anyways, it turns out our buddy had a fetish for going off on urine. He asked her to urinate on him in the tub. At first she agrees to it as she thought it was a one-time thing, but he kept asking for it more and more. She tried to decline it respectfully but he wouldn't get any of the hints. She finally used the tub being too small as a reason. Next day she comes home with two dozen construction guys and their heavy equipment tearing the bathroom walls. A week or so later, they finish up the bathroom. She comes home to a sign left on the fridge with a note to drink up. She got some watering to do. I don't know what exactly she put down as the official reason in the paperwork but that was definitely her biggest reason to walk out of that relationship. Oh I forgot to add. He also wanted to bring a horse to do the deed as well and at times, asked her to make animal sounds while she stood on top of him. My aunt had a case where the wife had glued all of the outdoor hoses together so he wouldn't spend more time washing his vehicle anymore. When the glue didn't work she just cut them all up. When he bought new ones ah he filed for divorce. I've been scrolling down this comment section for a while now, and this is the first one that made me laugh. Reminds me of when I cut up my headphones because I got mad that one earbud stopped working. My 90-year-old client, the husband, and his son retained me to initiate divorce proceedings with his 88-year-old wife. They'd been married 60 years. The wife had recently taken to beating him with his own cane, because their daughter poisoned her into thinking he was hiding money from them. The battle came down to husband and son versus wife and daughter. At their first court appearance, my client showed up in an old 1950s-style pinstripe suit and fedora. He was a farmer his whole life, and this was clearly the only suit he owned. He was such a meek and lovely old gentleman. I had to pass my client on to a new lawyer midway through the proceedings because I accepted a job in a different country, but I understand the divorce was eventually granted. This one hurts. Imagine spending that much of your life with someone and then it breaks. 60 years is no joke. I would have been devastated. A colleague handled a case where money was not an issue but the kids were. Neither parent wanted them. My mom worked in abuse and neglect counseling and juvenile justice. There are a lot more cases like this than I'd care to admit. Parents divorce and neither side wants the kid. Some of them are that neither side wants a kid but will fight over another kid. 
if ends up totally screwing them over because they have to live with the fact that their parents didn't want them. I represented a porn actress slash webcam model who filed for divorce from her husband who also did the porn slash webcam model business. He would do gay porn on the side because the pay was better. She was hesitant about it, but dealt with it because the pay was decent. Both sides had an agreement that it wasn't cheating as long as it was for work. One day she came home early and found her husband in bed with two men. They were not filming. That was too much for her. Needless to say, the old conservative judge couldn't wrap his head around this one. When I clerked for a judge, we had a week-long divorce trial between a couple. The husband was a wildlife photographer and the wife was a stay-at-home wife, no kids, who helped remodel the home. Anyway, husband was mauled by a grizzly bear he was photographing, spent several months in the hospital and rehab and was served papers shortly after getting out. Now without an eye and with severe scarring on his face and side. She wanted half of everything, the non-scarred half at least. My dad was a divorce lawyer. He had a client who wanted to divorce her husband for two reasons colon one. He did not have enough hair on his chest. Two, he did not drive fast enough. Keep in mind this was in the 70s when chest hair was a bit more important. Shit yeah, it would have been embarrassing to show up late at a pool party and your man not having a decent chest bush. My grandfather's brother was a judge who presided over state issue marriages from time to time. One couple he married returned six months later to confirm the wedding and end their trial marriage. When he thusly informed them that there was no such thing and that they had been married for six months they subsequently broke up. That sounds nutty. But if you believed your so when they told you trial marriages were a real thing, that betrayal could very easily end a marriage. This is more sad than outrageous, but some of my colleagues specialize in elder law and more people than you think get divorced on paper in the US in order to receive Medicare benefits without having to lose their home. See for example this article. Edit, Medicare slash Medicaid. I once knew a couple that never legally married because if they did one of them would lose their disability benefits. The system doesn't always work. She was kidnapped in Mexico and he refused to pay ransom. Eventually her family managed to pay and she was left on the side of the road. It is not outrageous as in petty but outrageous as how absurd that is. Edit to answer all the questions, I don't know how much they wanted as ransom. But it was substantial as the conversation between her family and him was how he had it liquid and they had to liquidate investments to get that amount. She may have told me. She may not. Something in pesos and I didn't know the conversion rate. It was all a random number to me. This happened about 7 years ago. He wasn't with her on the trip. She was traveling with cousins and went downstairs alone to get ice cream and wait for them to get ready. I do not know all the details. She was extremely distraught talking about it and it was not necessary to pry. It was clearly traumatic and even tough I had a million more questions I left it alone. I'm an intern but the judge I work for used to do divorce work. He has some crazy stories but this one is probably the most outrageous. Though the divorce was pretty justified. Every morning this couple would sit in the bathroom together while one of them had their morning dump. One would sit on the toilet and the other on the rim of the bathtub. This particular morning the wife was on the toilet and husband on the edge of the tub. They started to argue about their relationship so the wife reaches down, pulls her tampon out and flings it at husband. I'm told the tampon stuck for a brief second to his forehead before sliding off. He filed for divorce that same day or the next. Edited because I don't know what words mean. At first I read this as one shits in the toilet while the other shits into the bathtub as in they are both pooping simultaneously in rock paper scissors for who gets to use the toilet he was so concerned edit. Autocorrect thinks popping is much more reasonable than pooping and I agree. I knew a guy from a high school job who divorced his wife of two months because she would sleep with a nightlight but he could only sleep in total darkness. As they apparently never lived together until after getting married. He hated her nightlight so much that he would often sleep on the couch instead. But sometimes he would claim the bed for himself and lock her out of the bedroom for the night. This was an eccentric late 40s man working at a Burger King who acted like all the other high school co-workers were his best chums. And often told us these weird stories. I'm glad I don't work with him anymore. Failed exorcisms. Client had an inner ear condition that caused chronic vertigo. But symptoms could be treated with medication. Husband was an evangelical who was convinced his wife won had become possessed and that her vertigo and general crankiness with his methods were evidence of demonic possession. 2. The medication she was taking was enabling the devil to hide inside her. And 3. The only proper recourse was exorcism. He would hide her meds until she got dizzy and then try various methods of exorcism. This included sweating it out, put under blankets while incapacitated and locked in a room full of space heater freezing it out, pretty much the reverse with AC, fans, and bags of ice surprising it out. He would jump out and scare her like it was the hiccups. But instead of yelling boo, he would recite the Lord's Prayer or Psalms the final straw was that he tried to surprise it out of her by pushing her down the stairs when they were heading out for dinner. Note, this guy was some type of executive and they still went out to dinner after the stairs incident. She asked for the divorce at an Applebee's that night. I have often tried to picture that conversation, as she was adamant that he was a total sweetheart and never acted out of malice or anger. 
He had an argument with the new in-laws during the wedding and moved out at around 5 a.m. during the first night. I was a legal assistant when this case came in, but this lady divorced her husband of two months because he got her an iPad case for her birthday instead of the expensive jewelry she wanted. Man I was going to say that our client was served divorce papers for sending a couple hundred thousand dollars overseas in a scam. But damn you guys got better ones than me. Edit, it wasn't a couple hundred thousand, but over half a million odd. Emailing to a Baltic woman back and forth over a period of time over which he sent the dollars totaling to the dollar 500k plus. No video calling or anything. Just emails. My client put his wife in an assisted living facility based on a misdiagnosis, the medication of which caused the wife to be unable to care for herself. While in the facility, my client shocker started dating another woman and he thinks began using hard drugs. He used a lewd of money on both of these things. She eventually got off the medication and got better. Suffice to say, she was not happy about what had transpired. Greater than the medication of which caused the wife to be unable to care for herself. Oh my god, that is fucking horrible. Edit, and so my most uploaded comment is the one that where everyone bring up their worst anecdotes. Thank you for answering and I am sorry for your situations. Losing control of your mind is horrible in itself. It being caused by a medical error is even worse. Friend of mine divorced his then wife because she would only speak French when her family would come over. She was Spanish, as was her family. And hashtag X200B. To add, her family spoke English, French and Spanish. He could only speak Spanish and English. She got bored of being married to him. Her family basically talked shit about him whilst he was there. Was only when he recorded a conversation whilst they were there and got it translated he found out what was going on. And hashtag X200B, edit, oopsie. Staff attorney for a judge, not a divorce but a custody modification hearing. Ex-wife wanted sole LNP custody of the kids because the ex-husband was spending all his money on a palm reader slash psychic and refused to pay child support. On cross, ex-wife's attorney got him to admit that he was spending all his discretionary income on this psychic. He said he had spent over 5 dollars on readings and other services there. Judges frequently chime in with questions in domestic matters. So my judge asked why he was not paying support as his divorce decree required. His explanation was I, the psychic could read that his children were provided for without his money and two, he would be able to repay the ex when he takes the children to Mexico permanently to seek great riches there. Which my judge read as my psychic told me to kidnap my kids. TL, doctor, deadbeat ex-husband spent all his money on a psychic rather than child support. Told the judge he intended to kidnap his children. And hashtag X200B, edit, words. My husband's first marriage lasted six months. He found out she had been sleeping around with several of his friends and one of those friends finally felt so guilty that he fessed up. Husband actually wanted to work it out if he could. But when he tried to talk to her about it, she locked him out of the house and told him she wanted a divorce. Why did you marry me? He finally asked her. Her response? Because he was the only one she was sleeping with who could afford her dream wedding. Yep. Bitch married him because she wanted a wedding and chose the person who could afford it. Mind you, he wasn't wealthy by any means. He just wishes his friend had felt guilty about say, six months sooner. My douche cousin told his wife she had three chances to give him a son. Daughter was born first. Strike one. Son was born second. Then they find out the boy can't eat gluten. So my cousin divorced her and has made zero effort to see his kids. Edit, I remembered something else he did. He would take off work and instead of spending time with the babies or her, he'd tell her just act like him at work and do all your normal stuff. Then he'd watch TV all day. Douche. My great-great-grandparents had an interesting case. He was abusive. Like pimp her out and then beat her for infidelity levels of abuse. This was the 1910s, though, and in our state you couldn't initiate a divorce for cruelty. In fact, the only possible grounds for divorce was infidelity. A few times, she tried just leaving him anyway. Once he came home from work and she, plus all eight of their kids, were just gone, but he always found them, and since they were still married, he had every right to grab the kids and go back home with them. Finally, she moved out and went to live with another man. She flaunted the new guy around town until her no-good husband got embarrassed enough to sue her for divorce on the grounds of infidelity. Although she couldn't read or write, she put her ex on those papers the minute he served her. It was a major local scandal, very Catholic community. Divorce was rare, but she got what she needed to be safe.